Into the Nexus is a production of AMove.TV. Bookmark AMove TV for other great video games and esports podcasts. Into the Nexus is sponsored by listeners like you via patreon.com slash ITN. And welcome back, everyone, to Into the Nexus, the podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. I'm Garrett Weinzerl. I'm joined, as always, by Kyle Ferguson and returning for the month of November. Just before things get weird, before Thanksgiving, we're still not 100% sure what the hell we're doing next week, is Jeff Kanata. Welcome back, Jeff. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to be here. How are things with you? You know, we're not in person. It's not BlizzCon, but everything's fine. It's cool. Yes. Uh, we got a little BlizzCon hangover, that's for sure. But yeah. uh, I, I'm still, I'm still excited. It's, a, I think the game's in a really good place right now. I've been having a good time with the game. I had some yeah. great games this week. Uh, I'm tanking again for some reason. I don't know why that happened. I guess people just weren't picking tanks. But uh, uh, Johanna is like riding a bike. I guess I didn't really forget uh, how to play her. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Johanna's great. Kyle and I had some awesome games yesterday on our stream. Uh, I've had some some ups and downs, but it's been it's just it's just really fun. I feel like there's a lot of people in the game. Team League means you don't have to wait around to play. I'm 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 enjoying it. That's the big one. Is the game is filled out right now. I mean, I have a lot of friends falling through the woodwork playing this game for hours at a time. I played not only on stream, they you know normal hours, but just hours after that. Uh, Wonder William is really the cause of that. It seems people are feral for that mount. They want gold. And, you know, boosts are helping out. You know, they're kind of excited about the boostage. It's been pretty rad. Yeah, I got me that. I got me that that Billy. I also I could not resist the new Raven mount, which is yeah. awesome. Ooh, three color varieties. It's so, so good nice. looking. I need it. I need that mount. I need it in my life. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, um, it, it's it's interesting. Last week, I felt like I was just sitting here just like, give me the new changes. I'm, I'm hot off BlizzCon. That's what I played on the floor. I want it now. And then after this week, I'm like, oh, but the game feels like it's in a good place. We're all on the same page. I'm not sure I'm ready for the upheaval now. <laughs> yeah. They, they waited too long. True. They waited too long. I'm used to, I'm used to heroes as it is now. Well, we well, do well, know she- the next season role is going to be in... December 14th or so. So we can expect that then. Yeah, it'll be fun right? playing a little over the, you know, the traditional Christmas break or holiday break and uh, maybe get a little extra time in. Things are letting up a little bit with responsibilities. It's a good time to have things feel fresh and interesting. And I don't know. I, I think change is good. These kinds of games and this one in particular, I embrace it. I get excited to, to the, the fact that the game is liquid. Well, I'm, I'm glad that, that you can play Heroes of the Storm when you're fighting off a food coma, but with all the eating I do over the holidays, I'm not sure you want me on your team. Oh, that's the best, man. Just kind of slouch a little in your chair. You just rest your hands in the QWE keys. You're fine. <laughs> you're playing a lot of Lili? <laughs> is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> a lot of Lili, yeah. <laughs> Fall asleep on Q and you're fine. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> But uh, we're already kind of getting into it, so let's just hit that bumper. It's news time. We're on, boys! Ha-ha! Let's liven up this place! Put me to the stage! Stay a while and listen. It is Orphea release week. Orphea is out, and uh, she, came with, uh, she came with some nerfs. She came with some launch day nerfs. Hey, guys, I have a quick question. Um, if Probrius is a probe... Is Orphea an Orph? <laughs> just a question. Just, just, just a quick question to start things off on the right on the right note. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm I'm connecting the dots. I'm not sure why. The, it's, it's her name isn't Orpheus. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a female. It's a it's a little feminine. It's a feminized version. <laughs> so you're know. saying that if uh, we, we got like. Uh, uh, the, the, the probia would be what you would name your daughter probe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, sure. Okay, I don't know. all I, right. 
I guess I'm an idiot. I guess, I'm uh, with, yeah. I guess that would make Cassia a Cass. So it, it falls apart if you think about it, which I probably shouldn't have even brought it up. Well, yeah, Cassia Cassia's is a great name. And actually, this reminds me of my new hero request that I was thinking about this morning because I've been playing Diablo 1 for the very first time ever. I've been playing Diablo 1. Diablo it's, 1. Nice. Yeah. It, it's, Why? it's methodical because it's, it's history, man. You gotta. Plus, it's a huge part of Kristen's upbringing. Like that was like the one day you'll play this daughter as he played it, you know, like on his on her dad's lap, and then she played it when she got old enough. I mean, I like, like that. That is the Kristen history. So she's been taking me through it okay. with lots of like uh, leaving out information. So I died a horrible things and then laughing at me. <laughs> should, but, you know, that's a good way to that. share games. All right, fair. So, I don't even know how you how you play Diablo One right now. Is it does it support resolutions above six forty by four eighty? Not really, but uh, both Windows Eight and Windows Ten have built in DOS emulators, mm. and then there is a community made patch that will put it up to screen size and let it window and you know actually work. So okay. we got it functional, and I've got a request for a hero now, and it's called Skeletus, the Skeleton. Mm. He is our new multi-class. You choose whether you are shield, sword, and board skeleton, archer skeleton, or mage skeleton. <laughs> I like it. I you, just... pick, you pick it at, at four or whatever, and he like yeah. picks up he picks up a weapon. He's like, oh, look what I found. <laughs> yeah, you can give him like rattles for like some sort of armor or something, or like it, it, it sells itself. I mean, Varian, you know, oh, Varian King, what, what's he got? Well, he has a, 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 a stopwatch and an airship. Like, no, no, you just make up whatever the hell you want. It's Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> Please give me Skeletus the Skeleton. I know, I know what his trait is. It's, it's, a, it's a murky like character where he has like a two second death timer and he just reassembles from where you s smacked him down. So you can yes. die and just like come back to life in two seconds later, just go, click, 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 and he's back. So you're describing dry bones from Mario. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> not, Garrett is not a man disturbed by Dark Souls of recent years. Then thinking of dry bones. Uh, don't play those games. They're not for me. Punish yourself once in a while. No, Garrett. no. You deserve it. No, I. <laughs> I'll tell you, know, let's get topical. I punish myself by watching anyone play Fallout 76. Oh, oh, Ooh. wow. That game looks terrible. Well, yeah, I, I have thoughts, but I, <laughs> I blame myself for getting us off topic. It's my fault. And I did it for a very <laughs> terrible joke. And I regret nothing. <laughs> Good. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's on brand for well, the show. It's important. You know, like I've been sitting around, you know, Kelth is odd out. Malganis out. I've got to make my new calls. I've got to decide what I want. And BlizzCon didn't help me decide what I want because they made up their own character, which is great yeah. and fine. But yeah, I've got like Belial and now I've got Skeletus. I want just more random monsters. I don't need a named character with some crazy lore that saved the world or destroyed it at some point. Just give me a knoll. Just give me a Null hero. Give me a kobold, hmm. like rando kobold. Brightwing. Brightwing is a great example. She's just yeah. a friggin' fairy dragon. Give me more of that and name it. I like that. Uh, I I don't know. I've, I haven't really had a chance to talk about Orphea as a concept in and of itself, but I'm very conflicted about Orphea mm -hmm. coming to the game because on the one hand, I really like the fact that, that the designers of this game have decided they want to have an identity that is their own. I respect that, and I think it's a strong impulse and one that should be applauded. Like, go for it. Carve out your own universe. You're creative. Invest in it. Create a narrative. Awesome. Cool. But on the other hand, I like the mashup philosophy of this game. There are plenty of characters to choose from. I, I wish they would go farther that direction. And I think that if you were going to make a, a fresh new character that you invent out of whole cloth, I think the reason that you do that is because it's, I feel like it's got to be something that just wouldn't work any other way, you know? And I don't... I, Orphea's like, oh, it's a spellcasting assassin. O okay. I wish, I wish it was so weird and exciting and different that it was like, yeah, of course they had to invent a character for this because that's the only way it could have gotten into this game. And I just... I'm not feeling that with with Orphea. Mm. I know? mean, we we, we we got into this conversation a little bit that that we really really can't peg down her kit and say this would be X hero from existing Blizzard franchise. Um, I mean, yes, yeah, but what she issues, brings to the game doesn't really isn't super unique. You know, I don't know. 
I mean, I feel you. And I and I I like her. I'm not trying to dog on her, but I also you know with with the for, sorry for ranting, but the um what the Overwatch team did at BlizzCon was they showed this this cool story uh, um, trailer, this cool short film, right? And it had like six new characters in it. And then like one of them we put in the game. And I feel like Heroes could have done that. Where like if, they're, if, if they really are creating a narrative layer for this game, yes, we have we know about the Raven King. You've doubled down on the Raven King. He's a big character. We know about uh, the other boss whose name escapes me right now. Um, but like, I wish there was a full narrative layer of all kinds of stuff going on. And it's like, oh, and one of these characters we brought into the game, but you can expect maybe all of them at some point or the, you know, I just felt like it was just this one character that was brought into the game rather than a tapestry of narrative that was being introduced. And then we are plucking a part of that into the game and promise of more. You know what I mean? I've been trying to devil's advocate you, but uh, the issue is now I, I, I disagree with you 100%, like legitimately. Uh, oh. Like, my, I, my feelings are very similar to yours, uh, and, and I've, I've, I've mentioned them before, um, but I didn't think the trailer was all that interesting. Uh, I wasn't sold on the hero until the gameplay trailer rolled afterwards, when there, it was just Raven Lord versus, versus a Hot Topic Lolita Girl. I wasn't yeah. into it. Uh, was it wasn't really really my jam and, and then i saw our kid i'm like oh those are really cool spell effects and oh shoot she's floating around she's got a coffin on her back okay this looks rad uh and then i played her and she, she just got a good kid at the end of the day to me it's it's just a really good hero i'm with you i would just just give me more of them i just want heroes of the storm to be my big ridiculous blizzard fan fiction that's why yeah. i came to the game in the first place but i also feel the teams earned, you know, they, they've earned it. They proved to me that they, you know, if they, if they want to take a risk, if they want to put their own stamp on Blizzard Mythos, that, that they have earned the right to do so. What about a Dinomancer? Where did that Creates come dinosaurs? from? dinosaurs? <laughs> well, you know, like, you know, last week I said yogg Saron, or uh, there's another guy that works uh, even better. The Dinomancer would just be a troll. Uh, you just pick a, a Zandalari troll, you bring in Rastakhan, and uh, yeah. he, he's just hanging out with dinosaurs. And, and, and Razan, it, like his ghost spirit bites forward and smashes oh. into the ground. And Oh, can we just have that now? Can that be the next hero? Yeah. I know there's a lot of trolls going it. on right now between World of Warcraft and then freaking Hearthstone. And uh, maybe we don't need another troll, but I think we need another troll. Let's do it. I'm into it. I like it. Yep. Anyway, so we you haven't talked it? about the launch nerf for Orvia. Um, she released with nerfs. Uh, some rather sizable ones um like base abilities like shadow waltz the q for example getting a, a second tacked on to its base cooldown and then the mana cost was increased by 60 percent now the mana refund on hit has also been increased by 60 percent but it's now significantly more punishing if you miss this so this still reduces down to the two seconds and the one second if you talent into it. So and gaining a second didn't ruin your previous pacing if you were hitting heroes. And that's what it's all about. The bizarre thing, and they went through and you know nerfed some talents that, like her ravenous hunger, that just grows out of control. If you farm it actively, it goes on forever. Uh, Eldritch Conduit, which is really cute, but not quite we, what we were doing because the reset on her Jaws alt is so forgiving. But as people have gotten into her, they've started to realize the delay is really strong. That at first we thought maybe we had another Genji, a cleanup, a pursue character on us. But we forgot that Genji doesn't have to hit something to disengage. Mm. We realized that these long range pops might be done better by people like Chromie. Or even Kel'Thuzad, who has more kill potential at the end of his long range pops. And then the stats came out with a 42% win rate. Now it's, it's, it's fluctuating constantly right now. It was 40 on release day, 42, 43. It's climbing. And if high, you look at different leagues. Yeah, and higher in team league than hero league, the highest in quick match, again, fluctuating, but has more, this trend has more or less held. It's, it's interesting. Also, the, the I, have a, I have a theory as to why that might be. Uh, I think more people have this hero earlier than most people get new heroes. And I think that's because they gave it away at BlizzCon. And for anybody that bought the digital 
right? Uh, yeah, so more theory. people probably play her and are losing with her because they're just figuring it out than uh, than they ever have before. Also, because I think Team League, you know, you can play a level one hero in Team League. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. There's no restriction like Hero League has. So I think that plays a large part of that. Gotcha. But her her win rate is higher in Team League, at least from the stats available to us. Mm. Um, so I, I find I find that interesting. I don't know if it's just empowering her in a in a more coordinated environment works out better. But I'm 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 picking up what you're laying down, Kyle. I I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head that there's existing heroes uh, that are kind of doing what we wanted Orphea to do better or safer. And there there is a there is a skill ceiling there, and there's opportunities for really cool plays, and the plays are all made in the team fights which is where people want to be playing. When you look at a level two Orphea, this is like hero level. They're leveling her up. They want to get her ready for hero lay. It's a 40% win rate or lower. When you get to players who have ground this up to level 10, you're looking at a 60, 75% win rate. So people who know her, know her very well. You're also rewarded with movement by hitting tanks. And you're a mage. And you're spending mana to hit tanks, which has always been a bit of a value exchange problem because you want to put that in the squishy, but you can't access the squishy because then you'll engage past the tank. The meta is shifting really dramatically right now around what people saw during HGC. I, if you if you want to counter Orphe in my book, Skullcracker Muradin is deadly because mm. three auto attacks is going to time out pretty well with by the time you get that whip up and then oh, interrupted whoop interrupted and it just goes bad hmm. yeah it's interesting I and mean, she's still getting even with this low win rate she's still getting bands all over the place so, well i wonder if, if the, i haven't seen her in a drafted environment i went into quick match today specifically so i could experience some orphea in my heroes of the storm this week um but I, I wonder if that's because of what you were talking about, Kyle, with the higher level Orpheas are bringing home the bacon. There's also, it's just a, a tough environment for a character that's easily interrupted to release into. We are terrified of Malganus. In banned environments, we ban him. We don't, want to, we don't want to see him. Diablo, really popular, sometimes gets through because we're banning Malganus and maybe he can still wiggle it on. There's a lot of Deckard. There's a lot of Arthas. There's a lot of ways you're going to get locked down. And those lockdowns are what ruin Malfiel Diablo's day. So we're really overdrafting those at the moment for our home play. Oh, my Gannis as well. If he gets through, that is. He's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's legit scary still. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I uh, Do you think we'll see an adjustment? to her numbers uh, as far as a buff in the coming weeks. There is a lot of calls for more to be put on her queue. Right now, the homogenization of the builds has gone into one-shotting. So you go basically invest everything into Dread E, pump that up, pump that up, get that real big, and then you use your heroic crushing jaws to smack them together, follow up with your combo, slam, dash in, and do your chomp right on top of everybody and that does a lot of damage and you can get kills if you're ahead if you're behind it's a little lackluster so a lot of people are saying let's put that damage away from the combo let's get that off of e e is a great interrupt we're seeing her have a flat 50 percent on uh, towers of doom because she has these kind of chromey interrupt the channel powers uh, she's really succeeding in maps where you have really tight chokes or people are forced continually through chokes for full five-man team fights. Infernal Shrines, Cursed Hall, where these combos are going to be really big. But on wide open spaces, Volskaya, Dragonshire, you go from 45% on Volskaya down to 35% win rate on Dragonshire. And because no objective burn, Battlefield is turning at about 31%. That changes based on Team League. These are Hero League statistics. But she has some holes. People want to feel more rewarded for landing the whip damage-wise than dancing around until they have a combo ready to win with. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I find, that, man, the Dragonshire thing surprises me because the few times I've played her on that map, it feels good uh, interrupting the shrine. 
uh, trying to sure. you know, if anyone's channeling the dragon. But but now that I think about it, you're right. It's not not nearly as many choke fights on that on that battleground. Uh, that's uh, it's interesting coming into that. I like being surprised by that kind of stuff. But uh, it was great that Cursed Hollow has a great win rate. Can we all just say that? Like that that should be happening if she was failing on Cursed Hollow. The cinematics wrong and. <laughs> Nothing works. Lore's over. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think that's great that uh, Diablo is considered, you know, a, a meta hero right now. He should always be the only character in the game that is, is a titular character in the Blizzard world should be OP, right? He should be powerful, respected. Yes, <laughs> but I'm I'm <laughs> glad that we saw this 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 launch day uh, nerf come in because I was looking at her just being like, man, you are the phoenix of mages. Like, she just seemed like, oh, you're just better than all of the ones that exist right now. Um, so I, I like this more even-handed approach uh, coming in with the, with the nerfs that we're seeing here. Um, so I, I don't want to see an adjustment next week. I kind of want to just let it play out for another week. See how, uh, see how people adjust as we, as we learn her, but... Yeah, uh, there was some other stuff in this patch. Most of it we covered over the past few weeks. Um, I did want to make sure and mention the experience change to mercenary camps. They've been unified. So now all mercenary camps grant all experience upon capture. All experience upon capture. Pretty decent yeah. change. I like that a lot. Before it was last hit, which is pretty silly. I don't Unlikely want... to matter in most cases. Right. Right, but I I like this. It's it makes it even more risky. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it quite a bit. Uh, if you're wondering where the heck Cloakin announcer and Janet Leoric are, they are uh, they were confirmed to be coming on November 27th. I wonder why the the delay on those. Seems like it would have made a big splash coming into the same patch as Orphea, but I don't know. It's. Uh, I would assume requires inside information that is beyond any of us because they were, yeah. they were on the show floor. So Daniel Leoric appeared to be ready. Cloak and announcer appeared to be ready, but I don't know. Maybe they found something filling us out. Yeah. Like uh, uh wonder Williams going to come and go by then. I, I do think like there is some scandal to, you know, theorize into because Malganis releases with kind of a weird piece of art. And I know that the I now know that the Orpheus cinematic was outsourced and not done in the house. Hmm. They did which, have a really different art style than they usually employ. It's it, I I really liked it. It did. It did. I mean the 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 language I think could have been more interesting. It was very comic book. Uh, yeah, it's over, Joker. No, Batman. I'm just beginning. Like it. Like yeah. Uh, but beyond that, the art style was fascinating. But it was weird that they of... called each other Joker and Batman. That was yeah. odd. <laughs> it was the, the oddest part about it. Well, you know, yeah. the comics. The comics keep rolling out. They keep, <laughs> you know, I, I read uh, Batman, Batman fought Alien once. It was weird. Uh, Carnage, true. too. <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I enjoyed the visuals of the cinematic quite a bit. The script, not so much. Yeah, same. But. Yeah. Anything else from this patch uh, you wanted to touch on, Kyle? I, I feel like we've really hit all the big points over the last couple yeah. of weeks. Uh, I mean, this also rolled out the big monetization of the storm, our new structure for how they're going to make their bucks. I am officially grumpy. <laughs> okay. Death to gems. They're stupid. Uh, they're pointless. Oh, yeah. I'm done with them. I agree with you there. I mean, that's not really a, 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 about the, in particular, about the boost or the the bundles in themselves in and of themselves i have positive things to say about those but you're so right obfuscating the amount of money i'm spending just makes me not want to spend money i i i don't know when i look at a price of something i have no idea what that actually means and therefore i just go ah, i'm not gonna do it I, I don't know and that's i don't think that's their intended uh outcome and it's probably not the one that's typical for most people but for me that's what i do i just like i have no idea what i'm actually spending so i'm not gonna do it I, no, that's well, fair. I was I went in. I'm like, I want to buy the 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 year long boost, and I'm like, oh, it is not an amount of gems that I can just buy for dollars and equally and not have gems left over. I'm not buying this stupid thing. Well, the important thing is though, you did think about that. That's very telling that you wanted that boost this week and you thought about getting it. And 
from my own experience, when I did buy gems for something I don't even remember getting anymore, I think it was a hero because I had spent gold on something, something. I now have 900 gems shitting, uh, sitting there. And and you can say, they're <laughs> shitting there, too. They're just yeah, shitting around. Pretty and slip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what amount that is. And they are now fun bucks. Like, I'm sitting there. They're burning a hole in my pocket a little bit. I'm sitting there being like, oh, I've got free money. And my brain, like, everybody knows this. They know how stupid it is that our human brains go, ah, fun money. Doesn't matter anymore. Like, we, we realize we're being had. But in a split second decision, it does darn it work. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you, Garrett. It, it is, I'm, uh, get off my lawning this officially. Uh, it is uh, not ideal. It hurts my enjoyment of the game. I would I would spend more if I knew the dollars that I was actually spending. I didn't have remainders. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a bad idea. I have barely spent any real money in Heroes of the Storm this year, and before they made the switch to gems, I probably dropped close to five hundred dollars a year on the game. I'm I'm the same way. I don't think I spent that much a year, but I uh, I definitely spent way way less since they made the switch from actually showing me the numbers. And I, I'm down to buy a boost. I used to buy the year boost every year. And I, I didn't this last year because it was a gem. And I was like, I don't even know. And uh, I feel like, you know, maybe they'll do the the big Christmas uh, uh, discount that they've done in past years. They didn't last year. But I hope they do this year. If they do, I probably will do it again. But, yeah, I think the structure of how they have this free-to-play game monetized for the most part, is really good. It's just, I don't know how much money I'm giving you at any given time, and that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I can't buy bespoke amounts of gems for specific things I want, right. which also just irks the hell out of me, because I, I, want, I, want, to, I want the year-long boost. I, I also bought the, the 360 days thin pack every time it went on sale. I know it's not something I don't keep. I don't care. It was my way of, like, I like this game. I want to support the game. Here's my 60 bucks on top of whatever I spent on Heroes. So I just, yeah. just let me give you $60. Just put $60 right there. Let me hit a button. You charge my credit card for 60 bucks, and we move on with our lives. So wait, 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 wait. So would it be safe to say that the bonus gems are what upset you? Because 4,000 gems is $40. There is just the bonus gems that you unlock by buying more that sit there in your account. Yes, I don't want to so drop $100 to spend 60 What you do? You, you don't have the opposite to. happens. You see yeah. the opposite. You, you spend 60 and you get 65 worth or whatever it is. Oh, is that what the, I, did, did, I, you, how, how much is the freaking thing right now? It's 6,000 gems, right? There's no option to buy 6,000 gems. Right. You get... Uh, fifty dollars worth of gems and five dollars worth of gems. Yeah, and then you have X left over. <laughs> this is why it's the worst thing in the world. I am not. I am not here to sell gems. I am just. I, I'm seeing if that's where the trouble lies. The trouble yeah. lies in that I couldn't buy the exact amount of gems I needed to buy this damn thing. I think I the know. weird part. Go for it. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go am ahead. I am I wrong? Can I? No, no, no. I, I think the weird part for me is that we hope that when we went gems, that we were going into international currency and that we were going to receive gems for events and the fun bucks were going to be returned to us because they couldn't give us cash because that's weird for a company. No, but then they, cre they created a, a fun buck just for that purpose in shards, right? They're, the fact that we have three different denominations of currency, we have gold which buys some stuff, shards, which buys some stuff, and gems, which buys some stuff, or almost everything. Uh, all of that obfuscates everything purposefully and, I think, badly. I think it's it's not good to have more than... Have the real human currency that I need to pay for something, and then have your fun money that it's there that I earn in the game. It's, and never the twain shall meet. What do you guys think of the the tactics on selling the boost, though? Because I've heard very, very mixed results. And I'm, and I'm curious to hear, you know, hardcore heroes fans think of it. You got the visible in chat. So if you're in the AMU chat slash join AMU TV, all down the list, you see who's got a boost. Visible during the load up. Message pops up as the game starts. Who has boosts? Visible during the MVP screen. 
and then a button at the end that says, would you like to purchase now? We will now give you what you would have gotten if you had a boost. Yeah. And also, it's got a little thing that pops up when you start the game saying, hey, five people here have boosts. Like you, you got extra stuff because these five people are so cool. You, did you, don't you want to be cool like that? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a little nefarious, but I have to admit, there's a little part of me that digs it, man. There's a little part of me that loves it. I like that there's this cool reward for all of us doing something. And the fact that somebody else is doing something gets me the thing. I don't know. I, I, I like it. It is I, I, as much as I recognize that it is playing on my psyche in ways that kind of aren't cool. It doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. I, I don't mind it. I, li- I was fine with stim packs before. This is a little more pushy. Obviously, but as someone who was kind of on board for stim packs, this is like, oh, it's it's fine. It's just you get to spread the love a little bit more with the money that you spend, which which I kind of dig. It it does feel good as somebody who is not currently under boost, <laughs> boosted, <laughs> bi- which, bi- boosted. Which, it's, it's scandalous because people are always being like boosted Smurfs, but now they have taken that word back. We can't say boosted anymore. They're like, what are you talking about? They, they spent 10 bucks so they would have like bonus gold. No, no, they're boosted. What? Like now they need to add like a Smurf skin for someone. And they'll be like, oh, darn Smurfs. I'm like, what are you talking about? Johanna's not in this game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see Smurf I, Johanna. That's I'm adorable. not sure that that was their intention, Kyle, but I appreciate the, uh, <laughs> the tinfoil hat. Uh, well, I don't remember what I was saying. I was saying something. Anyway, I, I think it's, um, I think it's cool. Oh, yeah. I'm somebody who's not currently boosted. I like the fact that I get some extra XP at the end because people are cool and they're supporting the company in the game. It's great when I log into a game and they're like, you know, nine people here are boosted. And I'm like, sweet, free XP for me. <laughs> <laughs> there is a great psyche to that, that I feel like the game is, you know, 2.0 came out. And one of the great things about it was that the game felt more vibrant and alive because everybody's on crazy mounts and dressed up and master skins don't matter anymore and you'll wear whatever the hell you want. And in that way, it felt more like a party. And seeing so many boosts in quick match makes me feel like, well, this game is alive, it is supported, it is healthy. It's mm-hmm. making the money that's going to keep it going. And now, now you go over to ranked play and like strict drop off nobody cares about gold no one wants xp i'm already leveled i want darn rank points and you see like a fourth of the boost that you see in quick match it's funny yeah still relatively new we'll see maybe it'll catch on in the harder core modes um but yeah i'm fine with it i'm fine with it yeah if i stop to think about it a little too hard i'm like oh it's a little it's a little dirty there blizzard it's a little dirty but i just i don't care that much just let me pay you exact money for the thing I want. That's all I care about. It's the only thing that's getting me riled up about all of this is that it has reinforced how much I hate gems. That's it. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. No, but, I think I think we can all agree on that. Um, yeah. Are either one of you uh, uh, fearful of boot shaming? Because I've seen that talk a lot this week. Uh, I've seen the talk a lot. I haven't once seen it happen. <laughs> Yeah, I guess among your friends would be the problem. Because with randos, it's like, why aren't you boosted, man? I don't know. The game paired you with me. Sorry. Here we go. Yeah, amongst, I don't, yeah. I don't, you know. amongst friends, it's ironic. It's like one of those things like how how far, how long does is it until it's just something you, you – like is, it's no longer – like I get in with you, Jeff. I'm like, oh, man, you don't have to boost. Freaking uh, – <laughs> freaking penny pitcher over here doesn't want to share the xp with his friends i'm being ironic we're having a good time i'm i'm, I'm busting your balls a little bit uh but how how long until it just i don't know i used to say dope ironically and now it's just a part of my vocabulary <laughs> too late you messed up <laughs> you have become that which you despise <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um i it was one of my first thoughts about it I've seen a lot of talk about it. I haven't seen any legitimate boost shaming, um, which is dumb and silly. And there's all there's already bad attitudes. And here's the storm. What is someone being like? Oh, you don't have a boost, scrub. Like, is that really? Yeah. Is that really this the worst thing? This guy doesn't have a boost. Let's throw. <laughs> is that really the worst thing that could? Uh, that could I want to get into a boosted game. I want out of here. <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that. Uh, they also added back in bundles. Uh, they added the heroic reinforcement bundle, which is 30 heroes for 
the 40 bucks, so 4,000 gems. And the Welcome to the Nexus bundle, which is 10 heroes. I bought that 40 hero bundle because there were like three that I didn't own, and it was 75% off three. So I got like, it was like, I don't even know. I don't know how much I spent. It was whatever. Because of the fun bucks. Because of the fun bucks. But it was a very <laughs> small amount of fun bucks. And I was like, oh, there's like three heroes. I was like, I don't have uh, the Lost Vikings. I never bought the Lost Vikings. And there was like two other ones. I'm like, this is awesome. It's 78% off. And it, because it's a dynamic bundle, this is a great deal. I'm in. Yeah. It has White Mane and Deckard in it. Like if, you, if you're looking for some modern heroes, you can get them on the cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, uh, uh, shifting gears here, um, the changes have, have still not come in. We're pretty sure it's coming in in December. But uh, did, did you all see Mopsio's post about the upcoming changes? I thought it was really interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a really cool look at what we ignore in our home games because it's simply not fun and what the pros have to deal with and why the changes are spooky. Yeah, I mean, it, I I think I don't I don't want to go word for word here. I think you should go and read Mopsio's post and and put together your own opinion. But to for the sake of the show, to shorten it down, I mean, he he really kind of breaks down that hey, um, we're out playing each other on pro play by farming XP better. Yeah, he's saying that uh, uh, lower league players, more casual players, are are there to fight because fighting's fun. It's fun. And you guys have said this on the show over and over and over. It's fighting's fun. I'm not going to argue with that. It's true. Fighting's fun. But uh, fights aren't what pro players view as the most efficient way to win games. <laughs> well, and pro players don't have to deal with the additional resource we do, which is cred. Uh, <laughs> right. Tilt. Right? Like they, they, they deal with tilt, but they're, they're all in agreement that they're all there on stage or wherever they may be to play a game together and no one's going to just get up on the keyboard, break and lean. And we we have to make team fights in our home games because everybody will get mad at us and stop playing if we don't. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it doesn't account for that. But to to give you the gist of it, we're we're talking about the upcoming XP changes, the catapults being spawned periodically from the forts being destroyed rather than giving XP. So he goes on to say that here's a storm players at home want to brawl, but HGC players know it's about gathering resources to really get ahead. Kills aren't worth as much XP as soaking a lane. Back when we had ammunition, that gave us a second resource. Most MOBAs have multiple resources, gold and XP, and there are multiple ways to outplay. We had ammunition, which by taking a Merc camp, which doesn't give a lot of XP compared to that soaking, you could increase your resources by burning their ammunition and get an edge. Another way to outplay outside the team fight XP. All their team fights are going to be great because they're all pro players. When ammunition was removed, soaking and destroying building buildings, which is XP. Now the only resource is the only way to outplay mercs. We don't take them anymore because they don't burn ammo. Their XP is not high enough to warrant us leaving the lane. That's why mercs go untaken. And we were even noting this in our game yesterday, Jeff, that you just don't do them. It's yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fascinating recontextualization of what a, a, a game in, in Heroes is about from that perspective, right? It's it's looking at what your, what your resources are. What are you trying to gather, right? We're trying to gather XP. We're trying to deplete ammo from the enemy. Well, nope, ammo's out of the game. We don't. We literally lost that avenue of competitive advantage. So the game has removed one way to separate ourselves from our enemy. So it, by doing that, emphasizes the only other way we have to separate ourselves from the enemy, and that is XP. And and so then we have to prioritize the things that give you the most bang for your buck XP wise, which aren't mercs and now won't be towers. If you take those mercs, they go destroy buildings. Hopefully you just got XP without being there. If the mercs go and destroy a lane, destroy a lane, then destroy a building. They're just destroying XP that no one was around for. And there's no reward of XP when they destroy the building. So he is saying here that by making this change, we will continue to not take mercs. We will continue to have bruisers own the solo lane as they soak safely. And if you happen to take those buildings and lose map presence, 
The enemy team's obvious pro play move will be to freeze the lane. We've talked about this a lot in the past, but that is to stop playing, to let that XP feed towards you and very safely in range of your towers, maybe pick up your orb. And then that'll be, you want to be in presence of it and keep everything pushed out on your half. So it's too dangerous for the enemy side to do. If they want to be there, they're going to have to be a global or a high mobility character. Yeah, and so this this concerns me. What because if if this turns out to be true, which I got to say, Mopsio makes a very convincing argument. It, it kind of works against I think why a lot of us kind of got hooked on Heroes of the Storm is because um, just taking fights, just killing minions, just destroying walls, doing the obvious thing was more or less the right thing to do. There was none of this these weird rules that exist in uh, older MOBAs like League of Legends or, or Dota with like last hitting. It's like, no, you're not allowed to kill that. I have to kill that because I'm the one getting the cold, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the further, <laughs> I feel like the, the further we get away from just, yeah, just, just wipe the lane, just get a building down, just deplete ammo, whatever that case is, I feel we're moving further and further away uh, from what, what drew me to Heroes of the Storm in the first place. Yeah, it's almost like, not to use a terrible analogy, but it's almost like if, you know, a football team found out that you could quarterback sneak every down and just slowly move toward the end zone. And all the fans are like, no, we love those deep passes and we love it, the fireworks of the of offense. And like, no, 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 but most of the time deep passes are not caught or, you know, are intercepted. It's, it's not worth it. If we could just quarterback sneak our way to the end every down. We would win. And then and then the, the NFL comes in and changes the rules and goes, you know what? Quarterback sneaking is actually gets you extra yards if you if you run that play. And it's like, but wait, <laughs> we like to see the fun fireworks. Why are you actually making the game less what we want and more of this weird strategic uh, slight advantage thing? And for the nerds at home, Jeff is basically saying, how boring would Lord of the Rings have been if it was just about Frodo sneaking into Mordor and not about all the awesome stuff happening with Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli? Thanks. Well, thank, thank you for you. catching me up. <laughs> Thanks go. for the translation. Sorry. <laughs> if I were to take a guess, I would say the taking of the knee. Let's say you, you take a knee, and then if anyone tackles you, you get bonus yards. As someone who doesn't understand football, like every time they, they get the ball, they just take a knee. And, and if anyone touches them, oh, oh, yo, yo, he, he was on the knee. But like that means that means you get to advance. You messed up. Yeah. Like like tag on the preschool field. If they fall down and cry, they're still in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys think, I mean, uh, my strained analogy notwithstanding, do you guys think that the the design goals of this game should reflect what is most exciting from a player perspective or from a viewer perspective or should they just ignore that and create the the game they most think is competitive and challenging i i'm conflicted on that because uh, you know it's a cliche to say it's hard to balance for both the casual and the competitive but i think this draws it into stark relief it's it's a completely different game from those two perspectives i mean it, it, it kind of depends on what their their goal is, I guess. But in, in my mind, I, I think it's kind of one in the same. I, I, I think if you kind of designed the game the way, you know, closer to the way it was at launch, and I'm not saying let's just throw everything out and return to the way it was at Tech Alpha, but this this you want Hots Classic. <laughs> no, I want I want Hots Reforged, man. We're gonna go full circle. Warcraft oh, Three Reforged is coming out. Then we're gonna get original Defense of the Ancients Reforged, and then <laughs> Valve's gonna buy Defense of the Ancients Reforged, and then we're gonna get uh, Heroes of the Storm Reforged. Time is a flat circle. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> Let me slam this beer can flat. Um, my point being, I I I. I th- think the concerns that Mopsio puts here and if we were if they were to make changes to the game again to not reward freezing lanes um and incentivize uh taking risky movements out onto the battleground that it would also make the game more interesting uh as a spectator sport i mean should should they try to create a situation where the best way to win is to win a team fight and that's where we have a weird disconnect because I have people 
come by my streams and and message me and they're like you should you should pro up a little bit the way you clear some lanes you know the way you soak isn't very effective it could be more pro and that's why i kind of brought up the the thing well i'm also having to deal with that extra resource tilt in a hero league kind of scenario and in our home quick match games if this dropped today i doubt we would feel it like there's been a lot of times I, over this past week i'm like ah oh, there goes there goes solo lane zagar ah oh, silva silva's at it again you having fun down there silva i bet you are i wish i got a cruddy catapult on me rather than them having a two level lead off that <laughs> and, and, and like I'm ready for it in those situations because I want her to be less rewarded for doing that particular thing because we're team fighting our butts off and we're doing what we feel feels fun, feels natural, what everyone else is doing, and what everyone else is going to pressure us to do. But it all comes back to on the pro side where they don't have those pressures, where they're not going for fun. I hope they're having some fun, but you know, they want to win. It's also always worth saying that pros, this is their livelihood. Anytime any change hits, it's very scary, as it would be with your own job you have. If they say they're going to change up departments, they're going to change up your pay structure, anything like that. Really spooky. So always take this stuff with a grain of salt. But I don't think our home games will be highly affected by this change. It will, however, lead to a very stale, perhaps, bruiser and global meta that just owns the pro scene and we'll see that reflected in our own higher league games yeah i'm I'm not letting this turn me into a doomsayer i'm still excited to see these changes see how they play out because as, as i've as i've mentioned at nauseum i trust the team i trust that if it doesn't work out they will make adjustments this is not a game that stays the same for very long especially when things are not working um mildly concerned because of what happened last year around this time that was a change. There were some issues. They did stick around for a while because of the holiday break. But I just I, the, the the periodic catapults just felt really good. That's the kind of just my my gut reaction was I like periodic catapults. I want to see how this plays out. Well, it's interesting because their stated reason for even implementing these goals at BlizzCon was we want to create a situation where there are fewer games that are three and four level differentials and more games where it's only one level difference and it goes right up to the end and exciting right to the end anybody can win right at the end which is the opposite of what a pro play, pro team would want right that there, that stated goal from blizzard is we want to de-emphasize this resource xp we want to cr make a situation where xp leads aren't the reason you win and that I think is in direct opposition from what Mopsio is talking about here. So I kind of applaud that from Blizzard, but I also understand why that seems like a, a you know doomsday scenario from a pro player's perspective. Right, and we have the chance in our in our random home games to uh, outplay a lot of the time. It, if we're smashing pro teams together, let's assume in that vacuum that they all are playing at the exact same level when it comes to team fight. The the part of the game you might work the hardest on uh, in your home environment. So the team aspect is the soaking and the ways to outplay become those aspects. I agree with you. And, and to just, you know, as Garrett said, let's uh, like jump off the doom saying the end team fight is what matters. Really all these advantages, if they keep XP perfectly neutral, let's say you never ever gotten a level lead at all. Level leads are gone. XP has gone. These opportunities to outplay with a building, with a catapult, open up your victory condition. That wall is down. That boss now goes on to keep after you took it. And it makes its way onto the core. If that wall is up, boss dies. Wall is up, you can't win that team fight. Get all the way through that wall to the keep, through the keep and to the core. You're opening up your avenue for a victory. And if they keep those levels equal, that's still going to happen. And it should be more interesting. That final team fight is just as high value as it ever was. I came to the same conclusion. I was kind of doing the mental exercise as I thought through this question myself. Like, what what if they created the game where at 45 seconds you go up to level two, at two minutes you go up to level six? At, I mean, you know, you're describing, that literally, you're describing like Hearthstone's mana curve. When when Hearthstone right. was unveiled, us Magic players were like, "What do you mean, perfect mana curve? That's insanity!" Um, right. 
Right. And, and I, the conclu- I mean, uh, th- thinking through that mental exercise, I think the game is still fun and the game is still worth playing and exciting. And yeah, you lose some, you lose a lane of strategy, right? You lose a method of outplaying your team by, or the other team by creating those disparities, by having a, a talent tier advantage, all that stuff that I think adds some juice to the game. But I still think the game as it's structured works if if that resource isn't in. And maybe from a pro player that's that has trained and emphasized that as a major differentiator to, from their opponent, maybe that that paradigm shift is not attractive to them and it's a little scary and unappealing. But I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying I'm advocating for them going that far, but I... I don't think it is as as doom and gloom as it seems to be presented from Opsia's perspective. That's just my two cents, though. And I think you both have brought up very good points. Uh, is, uh, I, I think there's an argument for it will sort itself out, that we will still have prowess on display in professional play. It'll just be through excelling in different aspects of the game rather than XP gathering. He also proposes some solutions, which are worth reading out, because he doesn't just leave us with a bummer. He's got some ideas as to how this could be countered or yeah. done differently. Yeah, he, he suggests increasing XP by getting kills. Um, you know, he obviously mentions, hey, this needs appropriate scaling, et cetera, et cetera, but that he thinks it would encourage uh, players to make more aggressive plays um, at a higher level of play, which I would like to see. I'd like to see some more risks taken. Um, in in professional play, I also mentioned reducing XP for Fort and Keep um, instead of, <laughs> I guess instead of get, getting rid of it entirely. But he also said keep the underdog bonus to apply when you get structures. Uh, that this change is going to give away uh, or give way more comeback mechanics with proper rotations. I really like this idea because sometimes you are locked. You win that big team fight. Let's say you're. You're in that situation where you got Zul'jin and Kalthazad. The early game was awful, but you finally got all your stacks. You win the big team fight, and you surge forward, and you get your first fort. Darn. <laughs> and then, then, <laughs> oh, right, they're all back, even though it was 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, he thinks mercenary camps should give more XP, uh, but they should not give any XP for defending them. Uh, he says that it encourages people to pay attention on both sides of the map and make aggressive invades. Uh, hard for me to argue with that. I, it, that That's still one of the spookiest ideas of this whole thing. There's a lot of things that are like, let's see what happens. And, oh, that well, won't that be fun to fa- shake things up? But the idea of feeding XP to your opponent while you might not be soaking that lane, then it destroys itself. Again, that's why mercs on Spider Queen are awful because they not only make XP that no one collects, they make gems that nobody gets. Yeah. Uh, and then he mentions removing bushes from maps like Towers of Doom, Tomb of the Spider Queen, just like they did in Dragonshire on uh, back in 2017. This will give more visibility for laners and allow them uh, to make more aggressive and rewarding play styles. I agree. And I think Garden of Terror feels pretty darn good with all those bushes gone. It's fantastic. I like those. Yeah. The, the team fights around the seed are great. Now, I also, like I said, I have a lot of family and friends that are back into this game right now. And when we go and take a boss, like half the team goes, I'm, I'm watching in a bush. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guarding. And you're like, no, no, everybody's dead. We, we do the boss, kill the boss. They're like, but we, we have to zone. We have to like, if we could like that, that, you know, what I'm talking about curse hollow that bush. Yeah right there that everybody wants to sit and everyone wants to be that special guy watching out get rid of it (laughs) get rid of that bush (laughs) yeah f this bush get it i agree 100 percent, 100 percent. especially those two bushes in the top right and the bottom left of those are 100 percent. that's a great idea it's very different on alterac pass because there it's just like it's an advantage you have your lane you have to pass through the lane to go into that bush to sneak up on somebody who's in 
the boss. That's their fault if they're in there with the boss and their lanes pushed out and you saw them go in. Uh, it's fine. Uh, like, I don't like Blackheart's Bay, but it's fine there because if very solo Varian, which I did last night because I'm like, oh, I'm Varian on Blackheart's Bay. Screw this map. I'm out of here. Twin Blades, solo boss. If <laughs> if you see Varian chugging away, top, le- top two lanes, tink, 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 then go take the site, tink, 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 and then <laughs> push out far enough that those lanes are not walking by the boss at all. Guess what the heck he's doing? It's okay in that situation that there are bushes there. <laughs> yeah. Why are you yeah, tink tinking the... to take sight? Oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm twin blades. Quang, quang, he quang, everything. Quang, quang. Yeah. Just find something to tink, tink, tink. You're just going to yeah. tink it. I, was, I didn't know that. Show that's me something to tink, he'll tink it. I didn't know that's how he took sight. No. I, I thought tank, tank, yeah, quang, quang. You know, it's got that noise. It, it's the fun part of Twin Blades is the noise it makes. <laughs> He's saying there's nothing to smack on the... That's that's the fun oh, part. Oh, yeah, well. Is he just Still, bored? That's, that's is not going to stop Twin Blades variant. Right? There, just... there, there's, those, there's those two guys right there, you know, the, the, <laughs> they, that dropped the coins. I'm going to go ting on them in a moment. I'm, I'm preparing. <laughs> He's pre-tinging. Have you All never right. seen anyone sitting at a, you know, they run up, they press the button to cross the street, but they're still running in place. And you're like, what the hell are they doing? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Can I tell you my biggest, yeah. my biggest frustration about that is the people that push the button and then keep pushing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like it does anything to push it more than one time. Sorry, it doesn't go faster. No, it makes me feel better, Jeff. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Stop pushing the button. <laughs> the, the, the Hilton at BlizzCon, uh, the light didn't work on my floor. So I was just like... I hope it registered, so I just sit there and I just hit it about like every five seconds, and I probably look. I think like that's I... why they went to the sensor. Yeah, that's got because like there's the one the the boom you you hit the button in like the old Florida ones and those ones you just like smack all day. But up here in Washington, we have these little ones that you like kind of yeah. press your thumb into the little light hole and it goes beep. Isn't that the best? Yeah, it has a yeah. light that lights up and it goes. Don't touch me anymore. I'm, yeah. We're fine. I got it. I understand. <laughs> it's very sensitive. It feels obtrusive to like do it multiple times. I, I think they got me there. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we have a link to Mopsia's post in full in the show notes. You can always find those at amove.tv slash ITN. Just look for the episode 243 post. Um, or you probably saw it if you follow Mopsio on Twitter. Uh, before we move into a strategy segment where we're going to talk about uh, NA's HGC impact, uh, let's thank our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash ITN because those patrons uh, are the reason. Jeff, you come on every month. I mean, you're a really nice guy. You'd probably do it in any way, but we get to pay you for it, and we think that's really I, rad. I'm so grateful. I appreciate it. Thank you, for everybody who supports the show. If, if it wasn't for you, the show wouldn't get derailed every couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would still derail the show, and I mean, Kyle would every true. now and then. He'd bring up, like, Last Crusade, and we would talk about what a great <laughs> movie that is, besides the point-for-point uh, point intro of how Indiana Jones became himself. Um, <laughs> you know, those things tend to happen, but we're glad you're here for them to happen uh, with us. <laughs> I'm grateful. I, I love the show, and I'm glad for everybody that supports it, and thank you guys for welcoming me. Yeah. We're also very close to our next goal, which will allow us to pay another guest once a month to join us. And there's a lot of folks clamoring uh, for us to have not Paradox on more often. We would love to do that. We would also like to pay him for his time. So if you like Into the Nexus, you want to support us, but you also want to support our guests, head on over to patreon.com slash ITM because we're real close to the next goal. Help us, uh, help us push towards that goal. And we appreciate it. And on this episode, we want to thank some of our newer patrons. Thank you to Anthony O, Michael S, Matt B, Robert, a.k.a. Pace. Thank you, everybody, for the support. Hey, we also entered 2018. We have a brand new patron Discord that's functional and works and is a joy. It's been great chatting with you all this week. We're pulling questions directly from there for emails in the future as well. And tonight is our Patreon bonanza. So we're joining up with everybody for Team League. Yeah, yeah. Some of the questions in today's episode will be from the Patreon Discord. Um, and anyone who joins, anyone who becomes a patron, you automatically get access to that Discord, providing you've linked your Discord to Patreon. That's that's kind of how it how it works. But there's a channel in there to leave us uh, leave us questions. There's a channel in there to suggest future guests. Go check it out, patreon.com slash ITN. But uh, let's take a minute and look at some stats from uh, HGC. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Talent? Ha. Ah. That seems generous. Yeah, yeah, no clue what that means. You know, Gazzle's really starting to sound like Rocket Raccoon to me. <laughs> That's true. I never thought that before, but now I do. Hey, what are you doing? 
Yeah, the same. Kind of the same. Now I want a, I want a raccoon gazelle skin. Make it happen. Make it happen, heroes. Um, he could be. A, he could be a, have Groot on as the yeah. robot. <laughs> Got a plant behind him. Yeah, yeah. totally. It'd work. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Be so freaking good. But anyways, um, yeah. HGC's impact. We've we've got stats now. We have most picked, most banned. We have highest win rate. Freaking Arthas is the highest win rate hero. Yeah. In NA. What? What is happening? Eighty one percent on that guy. Yeah. Wow. Followed by Valera, Vala, Tassadar, and Zul. Hmm. Yeah. Now. I would like to mention that looking at NA, Arthas had 13 wins, three losses. So not, not a bunkers amount of games. Right. I mean, we, when we look at most played, you had Muradin with 111 games over the course of HGC. Decker with 106. Blaze, Urel, Malfurion. There were other things being fought over. Yes. <laughs> 100 percent. Uh, but that ties into what you mentioned what feels like a lifetime ago now when we were talking Orphea and just how punishing uh, standing still is. So roots, <laughs> roots are kind of king right now. Yeah, it is really, it is really a point worth making. Uh, the design team has been after stuns for a long time. Stuns mean you don't get to play. And they have worked really, really hard to restrict these. They're on a lot of skill shots. They're on characters that have to heavy invest. They are on Uther, who is dangerous <laughs> to draft if he's not solo tank. Like, right, there's this, there's a lot of reasons why you need to generate more than what Uther can give, but you're taking Uther for the stun because something's going to die of you, right? Like, there are lots of drafted, they, they've crafted stuns in such a way that they want to make you think we need a stun. But Roots have kind of run away with the game and the length they last, the amount of talents that work with them. Look at Orphea right now. If you are trying to stack your ancestral strength, to do bonus 25% damage, you can hit a stun target. What Your wind-up, and by the time it comes down on a 0.75 stun, you missed. Your eyeballs, the flies in your eyeballs, the process in your brain, you say, I should whip that, nothing happens. But you see, here comes the Deckard root triangle, and you're like, oh, get ready. Here comes the bonus damage, and you follow up, and you do amazing damage. We are seeing this across the board right now. Roots are very dangerous into Diablo, who's been king for a really long time. Diablo is destroyed by Roots, was during the Malfurion rework, even worse now that he doesn't have speed demon talents to recover from it. Arthas, Zul, Thrall, Deckard, this is the CC meta. Don't think stuns, think Roots. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was feeling that way, but it's good. It, it's cool to see it kind of mapped out in statistics. Like you're still going to need your stuns for Nazebo Ravenous Spirit. Uh, let's think of something actually scary that happens. Uh, <laughs> that, that does happen. I'm not being insane, but yeah. There, there are reasons why you may want to get a stun over something else, particularly a channel thing. If you're fighting Lily, you know, you'll want a Johanna over that Arthas to just give the interrupt. But those are getting more limited. I, I feel that the drop off started with the drop off of ETC. Like in my home that's, games, yeah. that's where it felt. It I was like, oh, stuns are kind of going away because mosh pits aren't happening as often. Yeah, and even that Uther stun is for stopping that Genji from deflecting, that Sonya from spinning. We're interrupting something with those stuns, and this philosophy has drastically changed. And ETC is a great example because mosh pit is one of the few stuns that lasts enough to follow up. Right. So, um, but what 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 were what were any players the most afraid of? There's a lot of bands going on, and over 100 of them went into Genji. They're terrified of Genji. Can't blame them. Uh, Sergeant Hammer, Abathur, Medivh, and Diablo. So really, Diablo being about the only one of these that we could reliably ban. As we've said multiple weeks, Genji's always got his maps. You may want to consider it Braxa style, but it's a crapshoot at home. What kind of Genji are you gonna fight? Yeah. Yeah. Also, it was the it was the year of Sergeant Hammer with ninety one bands. Um, also, landing on the uh, second place in top hero damage as far as an average, averaging almost sixty five thousand damage per game. Bala's really big right now. 
And a lot of this has to do with her absurd damage numbers across the HGC. Top damage consistently across the most games. Uh, you're probably seeing her a lot in quick match right now. She has a great shift. She follows up roots very well because she's got a very dangerous skill shot. Sometimes those roots are too far out. And you got to close. Vala's better at that than Zuljin, than Rainer. Old, reliable Vala. Yeah. Always comes back around. But and, and is there anything else in here that, that surprised you? I mean, Arthas was, was the big one for me. I'm surprised that uh, Valera has such a high win rate. Well, it's, and you're, I, I bet she, she probably like just made that five game minimum, right? <laughs> You'd think. I don't know. I'm just surprised to see her on the list here. And Valera's having a real, a, a real comeback in home games. It is, it is a frightening thing. It's our solo lanes at home are in a weird flux right now because a lot of our guys that we're doing it with, Dahaka, Urel are really weak to Rainer. Solo lane Rainer is dominating Braxus in the home game. And if you spend, if you send an Abathur up there, oh my goodness, horrible time you will have on anything you thought could solo lane Ragnaros, Thrall, any of your old mainstays, horrible time into Rainer Abathur. And Rainer in general, he's going to win. Same thing happens with Valera. Valera visits can kill those heroes that are so reliant on long windups like Orthia, like Urel. And Valera has, by lack of nerfs, snuck into being able to take Merc camps. So few heroes can soak a lane and take a Merc camp at level 4. Zeratul is really popular now. He has to wait to level 13 to take a Merc camp. Wow. I have not seen Valera showing up in my home games, but I've always enjoyed playing her, so... I guess what I'll be doing before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Dust it off. <laughs> Dust it off, man. It's It's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Oh, that's rad to hear. But uh, as far as what's, you know, you know, taking a peek in at uh, international play, um, it seems like Korea is uh, favoring Hanzos and Phoenixes over second tanks. Yes. Yeah, they, they like to run their big solo tank. This is another knock towards, uh, towards Arthas. Uh, Arthas just holds on. Johanna, it's limited. You do you do one convection and it's over. And people go, thank you, Johanna. I backed up two feet. I will now proceed into your back lane. Whereas Arthas gets a hold of you and you're just like, oh, okay, come on. And they really kind of favored doing one big forward tank with guns a-blazing in the background. And sometimes it was blaze in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that makes me uh that makes me happy to see. I really I I love. I mean, Ar Arthas was first put on the map by uh, Korea, as far as I was concerned. So I'm glad to see he's still, still getting the picks over there. Hammer was feared across all regions. No one wants to battle her. Uh, one, my favorite personal thing that came out of HGC was Rich's Alarak play. And when he played Alarak, he didn't give a damn what we thought about Alarak's builds at home. <laughs> and if you enjoy Alarak and you enjoy your builds, you get to do it right now because no one knows what build Alarak should be doing because Rich did whatever the heck build he wanted. <laughs> and you just, is that, is that the great talent? I don't know. Rich picked it at some point. It's great. It's good. <laughs> I had a guy yesterday in, uh, in, in voice chat. It's just like, oh, I'm so, I'm so glad HGC happened. Everyone expects Rich's Alarak build and no one expects what, you know, the build I do. It's wonderful. It's yeah. been winning me games. And I'm just like, cool. Glad you joined voice and told me the story, sir. Because no one can decide. It's it's rather fabulous. And that's like one of the, the real gems of something that can happen in HGC play. I hope this this hammer uh, fear doesn't percolate down into the lower leagues like it has in the past uh, years ago. Because I, I never enjoyed metas with Sergeant Hammer in them. I, uh, hammer to me is like Cho'Gall. It's, it's, mm. it's a character that, like, if it's on your team... It's just everybody has to just be at the service of, of that character. And it, it makes for games, even when I win them, they're not that fun for me. I, I really haven't seen much Hammer since Chromie started to kind of climb back in. Yeah. I haven't seen much either, but I don't know if this uh, this will have an effect at the at the pro level, if it'll trickle down. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. you seen any Hammer in your home games, Kyle? No, but it's a lot of Rainer, and I feel like Rainer is the more... Oh, reliable over the hammer. Hammer scares the folk. 
And if we're dealing with that resource tilt, Hammer can bring it on, whereas Rainer's well accepted. I mean, they both have the same kind of problem. Rainer's got some regen on him, some more solo capability, but it's that pushback. You know, you're trying to coordinate a big play to get in on the Hammer, and you go in and get pushed back. And whoop, well, I guess we're all stuck in perfect range. And we don't have a second one. We don't do false engages. It is, and that's something that's just hard to do. You know, with my, with my casual team, you know, when we're playing and I have to tell people, hey, let's make a false engage. We're already losing pretty bad if that's the case. Yeah. So have you returned to Arthas, Kyle? I know you were working on him for a while. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got his place, particularly against anything that wants to access that back line. And if you follow him up with that Zuler Thrall, my goodness, it's going to go really, really well. Uh, just really restrictive on those those dive characters that can't extend past you. You know, Genji, fine. You can go all the way through Arthas and go crazy back there. But things like Cassia, who's been doing really well for a while, she's restricted by Arthas. He does a good mix of spell damage to her a little bit. Makes her stand still, which is what ruins her trait in the first place. So those big Frostmourne hits do hit hard. I think he's really, really solid. If you've been you know, on the Johanna train like me, it might be time to switch over. Plus, he has a great, a great call to action with the, with the ghouls and just fantastic. Oops, you targeted me. Haha, -ha, survivability with icebound fortitude on top of that. I've always, he's always just been there in the back pocket for me. So, and he hasn't changed that much. So, <laughs> I feel like if you can play Arthas at the beginning of the year, you can probably play Arthas now. So, I'd uh, say, like, this is really healthy. All of this builds up to a really interesting, healthy draft environment where having one main, unless it's Muradin, is pretty destructive. You can, you can play Muradin. Muradin's great. <laughs> <laughs> so parting thought before we move in and take a question or two, do you think uh, the big changes coming to the game are going to shake up uh, these picks, this meta? Hmm... Yeah, if those hit, how would this all be affected? Murden with that lead would still be pretty darn good, wouldn't he? Would we see those globals come in? I feel like globals are so well restricted with health, with the amount of damage they do. Brywing just didn't have the impact that a lot of us thought she was going to have when we looked at that sweet new kit. I really felt those this week. I uh, yeah, played play with some buddies who enjoy the Dahaka and just got that feeling. Like, I expect the Dahaka to be here by now. Mm. Yeah. He runs late. It builds up over time. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it, it, was just, it was an off the cuff question. It's so hard to predict. Right. I, I, I think if, um, I think if roots are in fashion now, this is, they will, it stands to reason that will still be in fashion after those changes. Cause you're still going to want to get kills. Yeah, we will. They can soak to their heart's content. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be a while before we see pro play on that patch, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll have to wait till uh, the new year. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> it's it's. I'm feeling a repeat of last year, Kyle. I'm feeling a repeat of here's all these changes. Wait till the new year for the pros to figure it out for you. That's spooky. It's spooky because so many of us want to grind during that time. We have the time to grind to get those gold. New Year's, right? We all kind of get ideas about New Year's. I'm, I'm sick of being X. So I want to be A and going at it. I'm feeling that right now, too. It's why I'm kind of stuck in a weird limbo of, like, all my friends are playing super casual and wanting to invite me to parties. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, let's level. Let's get, let's get some, uh, let's get our Wonder Williams. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I really want to grind. I want to take this game hardcore. I'm get I'm getting the 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 Mayev itch. I want to I want to learn how to play Mayev correctly. That's that's I think going to be my Christmas uh, my 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 Christmas hard left turn. Just like yeah, I could play heroes. I think that's good heroes. I'm good at, but I think I'm just going to play Mayev instead. I think that's a good through line for you. Grab onto Mayev, grab onto Valir at the same time. Play nothing that has self regeneration at all, <laughs> so that you can't be wrong when you pick it because it is frustrating to jump between the two i mean for, for you jeff like looking at this big old list everything we just talked about do you have anything on your shopping list 
Oh, always. Uh, always. I definitely um, have... Uh, I said this to you yesterday that uh, now that Orphe is in the game, it's time for me to learn Malganus. I'm always like one hero behind, you know? Uh, but also, m my situation is that when I sit down to play heroes, I, I get, you know, uh, precious little time because I have so many other things going on and a family and all that. Uh, I, I often want to learn a new hero and spend the time, but I am so disinclined to jump into a quick match to do that. I much prefer to spend my time in a ranked draft environment. And so I tend to just keep playing the same heroes that I feel confident with because I just want to spend my time kind of being more competitive in, in that scene and trying to rank up. So I got to, I got to get out of that and figure out a way to open up my options a little more. Cause I'm kind of focusing down to, to a narrow and narrower list of, of heroes I feel comfortable with. And I don't think that's helping me. Um, I, I would push back against that. I don't, I mean, a lot of pro players don't play that many different heroes. Uh, it's, it's too much to be fluent with at a, at a certain yeah. point. Um, so I, I think that's okay. I think it's a healthy place to be if, if your goal is to improve your win rate and, and, and improve your performance in the game. Uh, I think one of the best ways that you can do that is, is, is tailor down your stable of heroes. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I, I just find that uh, in in the draft, I wish I had more utility. I wish there were. I I know the character oftentimes that should be picked here and go. Ah, I just don't have the skills to pay the bills on that on that character. So I'm going to stick with something that may be less ideal for this team comp, but more suited to my particular confidence and skill level. Um, and and I think that's the right choice, right? I'd rather come in confident with the hero I'm playing and, and know the ins and outs, I probably will be better to my team. But if I had a stronger stable, I think maybe I could be of more use to more team comps. That's why I'm on the team league. Because I got this, I got the hero league where it's all all mains all the time. And then anytime I want to kind of look the other direction. I Not for long, right? Not for long. Maybe like there's the that we've heard like mixed reports that maybe there'll be two MMRs and hitting the solo button means you'll be in you know your old MMR and Team League will have its own. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be weird. Like why take why take the two modes out of the game if you effectively have two modes? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's, it's weird. I like the idea that if you solo queue for Team League, you're just saying I don't care, put me in either. Will Hero League people hate people who don't care, put me in either? For for me, I I just want to make the mental choice already. I want to know if I am saying to my friends, "Let's play unranked." Yeah, this is this is my home. Right, I made it pretty for me. <laughs> it, it's my <laughs> Skyrim house. I don't want any multiplayer. I put that all those cantaloupes are in that closet. Don't eat my cantaloupes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I play Fallout because I don't want to talk to other humans. <laughs> That's uh, that the, the GameStop guy. Years ago now, asked me, hey, did you want, do you want to get in on this Elder Scroll online? And I said, I don't want anyone jumping on the king while I'm talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Stop jumping on the king. There's your show title. <laughs> I think I already put Ting Ting Varian. But, uh. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it all, it all comes back to Varian, yeah. So, but <laughs> bring on, uh, bring on, bring on the changes. I, I, I don't know. I've gotten really used to the way it is right now with Team League and Hero League being separate. But so I, I don't know. I'm. I would be okay if it just kind of stayed the way it is. I don't think there's it's different it. after BlizzCon. It, it, people are really stoked on this game. There's, a, it's, it's well filled out. My queues are back into the 700s, 800s. That's way better than the 15. The the one thousand five hundreds. Yeah, you mean just for Hero League? Yeah, like they, yeah. that's down by half. You know, yeah. people are just playing. Yeah, I haven't even tried Hero League this whole season, not once. It's just it's just fun in in Team League. It's having a blast. Yeah, there's a lot of fun people. You meet you know you meet some cool characters. It's... I've had that experience where like we had a a winning game. I was I was a single cure into a four stack. And they're like, hey, here's an invite. And then we played three more after that and had a blast. Lost one, won a couple of others. But it's it's just good. It's just me meet a group of people. Everybody's on comms. It's like exactly the promise of this type of game. Yeah, and I've, I've had bad experiences too. But I've, I've definitely had more good sure. than bad. Um, I've had 
positive losing experiences quite yes. a few times in Team League, where everyone's like, all right, what well, we gave them hell. We made them work for it. Good job, everybody. Have a good one. Uh, yeah. It's not always the case, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy with it as well. So, Anyways, uh, let's uh, take some questions or two before we wrap this up. Darkness stopped calling. Hold on. Darkness just texted me. Okay, tell them I'm not here. You can send your emails to itncast at gmail.com, or if you're a patron, you can go to that new questions uh, chat room and just drop a question in there, and uh, that's where Master DS's question is coming from today. It's coming from the Patreon Discord. Master DS says, with the introduction of a Nexus hero, do you think after the second Warcraft Battleground, they'll go back to making Nexus Battlegrounds? Also, what universe has the most potential for a new heroes slash Battlegrounds uh, type of thing. And he, he puts that for, forward Nexomania, Mecha Storm, the Storm slash Viper universe, Raiders of Warchrome High School, those one Space Leoric <laughs> is from. There are a lot, actually, and you're not wrong, Master Diaz. He says, personally, I'd like to see Nexomania or Raiders of Warchrome most, though I'd expect Space Leoric or Mecha Storm more, as heroes don't have any Nexus brand sci fi maps in yet. Also, high school would be a really goofy pick I'd be down for. I'd like to see high school just to see what the hell they would do with it. Um, but I, the space universe is the last one I want. I think their space skins are the most generic. I would I lo- love I to love see this question. Store. Sorry. Uh, I love this question. I love this question. Uh, I wish they, instead of creating the the Raven Lord and all that stuff. I wish they doubled down on this and really made heroes of the storm. Like I wish their realignment of what heroes of the storm was, was this was elseworlds. If you're like a DC comics fan, it's, it's yeah, it's all your stable of hero of a uh, uh, blizzard lore characters, but they fight in these crazy elseworlds. It's like, uh, you know, red sun when the, the comic that DC did a long time ago, where what if, Superman had landed in the Soviet Union instead of Kansas, you know, that, that's what this should all all be all of these maps I feel like the Nexus lore maps eh, They're fine, but you know Dragonshire is just Generic fantasy land like yeah, go all in on Nexomania and Mecha Storm. Yeah, create lore that it that what if Blizzard Characters had to come to this crazy Elseworlds where Blizz- they're they're you know other versions of themselves were already living there. And I think that'd be rad. I wish they leaned into this idea. I want to see Prince. I want to pre see pre Stratholm Arthas have to fight Lich King Arthas. Yeah. It's like, it's like crisis on infinite earths. It could be, <laughs> it could be that, you know? Yeah. Give me well, a- and something that always happens in those comics is there's the one gladiator from gladiator planet who kidnaps all the heroes for his grand <laughs> tournament and says, welcome heroes. You will now go through You're the, the great beyonder. Spy. Yeah, That's the Beyonder, baby. Yeah, like, and, and now you sold me. Now I'm mad because Raven Lord, he doesn't interact with anybody. He, they're all interacting in their own lore. He, yeah. there, there's no reason he gets he gets the focus, the uh, Nexa Crystal, the the void. Boost. It's a boost. It, the, yeah, <laughs> he finds <laughs> a boost with gems. And he never once is like, now I can make the heroes battle one of them. He's got his like dark nexus people he summons, apparently. His dark dahakas and whatnot. But he doesn't gain power by the woe of these heroes clashing. He doesn't, you know, their, their souls don't fly out into his crystal and he captures them. He's not interacting with them. Yeah, I think I think this is a complete missed opportunity that Master DS has completely hit on. Where it could have been, instead of thinking of skins as an outfit for your guy, what if it's a new character? What if the the skin, it, you know, Mecha Tassadar is, and Tassadar like meet each other, and Mecha Tassadar is like this bizarro version of Tassadar, or whatever character you want to say, right? That the skinned version is. The Blizzard games exist in a world that's all Nexomania or all. Raiders of the War Chrome. You know, that is a cool idea. And I think I think it's a missed opportunity. Well, and even something like uh, the the Garden of Terror. She wants us to collect her seeds. But there's not like there's nothing 
Like maybe if there was just a line, like actually, there's something kind of weird going on right now too in Dragonshire because it, the objective comes on and she goes, "My husband is dead." And you're like, "Whoa, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about?" <laughs> That's Don't make really me sad intense. right before I play. Yes. <laughs> right. Why? Like, I know that he was like turned to stone, and I I think it's neat that you worked in the lore, and like there's a great explanation to it. But holy crap! Like I I would prefer if if Garnetair was like yes more bodies for the pile soil made of corpses like and you're like okay like now there's a reason why you want us to beat the crap out of each other. My here. husband just died. My husband is dead. <laughs> like holy. Rod, dude. If all of the maps were about somebody's husband having just passed away, well, I'm just sad. Damn. <laughs> damn. Yeah, amuse me. I'm, I'm just, just dance for me, puppets. I'm sad. Uh, so, so if we were to like Banjo Kazooie Mario this thing, we got Halloween level. We got a Towers of Doom. We got a uh, Dragonshire, which I guess is our our kingdom level. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. You got the desert level with Sky yeah. Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah, yeah. You know, all know that song. Um, the Garden le- Garden Terror is always that weird night. The night level. that There's always a one at night where you sort of have to turn lights on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, got our, we got our fire level. We have our ice level. Yeah, we yes. have Ultrack Pass and uh, Battlefield of Eternity, Infernal Shrines. So two fire levels, I guess you could say. Hmm. But what's missing? I TikTok wood where we change the seasons we got <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's garden me I, I think it's basically we've more or less covered it <laughs> so I like to, uh, I like I want mecha storm yeah I, I want mecha storm as well they, they, they we saw a mecha storm wind it looked amazing yeah got ninja level give me that um I mean Hanamura is ninja level yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we pirate and ninja level, both of them. Yeah, covered. pirate. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, well, I mean, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go to quick patch for that. You guys, you guys hate that map so much. It's I okay. Like that map. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's it's not haunted mines, which should just never come back right. ever, right. in any form. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So to actually answer Master GS's question, do we think we'll see more more Nexus battlegrounds? Um, yes, because they're really hot to trot for their in-house lore right now. I specifically asked them this this that exact thing uh, at uh, PAX East, where earlier this year when I hosted that panel, I back when they were introduced the comic and said, "Hey, we're going to double down on more." I said, "Oh, does that mean there will be more non Blizzard universe uh, maps?" And they said they were cagey and they said, "Yeah, hey, we're always looking at all possibilities." But uh, I think I think that's probably likely. Yeah, I think maps are just going to get rarer and rarer. I mean, do you think we'll? even get two new maps next year. I hope so. I like new maps. I get excited for new maps. Especially Alterac Pass is like my favorite map right now. And it's the most recent one, you know. That's that's a good thing. If they're still not, you know, getting uh hitting home runs, you know, late into the late in later innings, it's a good thing. Too many sports analogies today, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Jeff. Sorry. Uh, chat's asking if Haunted Mines is the sewer level. <laughs> it smells, it feels like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, w- I would really like to see Mecha Storm. Um, I'd really like to see a Nexomania one. I th- the Nexomania was so much fun. I loved yeah. the whole on brand thing, the luchador, like ridiculous, uh, like over the top wrestling. I really the enjoy that kind light, of stuff. The black light look of all the characters is so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, God, that's, oh, the center's just a cage fight. They make some type of objective where you, everyone has to report to the center and then the, the cell closes and you're just stuck in there until there's, and, oh, until man. there's no heroes from the opposite team left. The map could look so rad. It could be, it could, there could be crowds of people in the corners and like mm. big, long, you know, ramps, you know, as they walk down to the stage uh, you know, have the, the big the, on the the apron. Uh, yeah, that could be a really cool looking map. I'd be so into it. And uh, Diablo could hit people into the turnbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Any interaction with the bell on the wall makes a noise. That'd be great. Like Lucio <laughs> skates by it. Bing. You could smash the uh, the Spanish announce table. Oh yeah, yeah poor, poor 
<laughs> for Spanish and out that that would be the objective. Yeah. It'd be a guaranteed insta kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that'd be good. That'd be good. Oh yeah. I'm I'm down. I'm down for this. Don't don't just give me some other kind of generic fantasy battleground if we're not gonna do one from an an established Blizzard universe. Th- their, your events have been great, heroes. Like really revel in it. Give us a give us a battleground to fight on from one of these events. Yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. I'd be down for it. I'd give it all up though, just for a, a, a new Brightwing skin. I don't care. Just give me give me a Mecha Brightwing, please. Who do I have to pay? I will I will I will buy your gems. I don't know how much <laughs> of them. How many of them do I need to buy? I will buy them. Death. I will have some left over, please. Uh, <laughs> Deathwing, Welpling, Brightwing. Uh, Mutalisk, Brightwing. Yeah, all of the above. Any of the above. Just anything other than Brightwing with a hat on. <laughs> well, you, so you don't... You, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is you don't like the seasonal Pikachus in Pokemon Go. Uh, I, no. I mean, I'm not a Pokemon guy anyway, but I'm very frustrated <laughs> that uh, every other character has these rad skins and Brightwing's like, we put a scepter in her hand? I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, Ultra Mecha Jeff says, "What about a Hearthstone board?" Yes, Ooh. yes, that would be cool. Do it, freaking do it. That'd be so good. But uh, thank you for this question, Master DS. This was really fun. Uh, keep the questions coming, everybody. You can email us itncast at gmail dot com, uh, or you can uh, leave a message on the Patreon Discord if you're a patron. If you would like access to that, head on over to patreon dot com slash itn. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Huge thanks to our badass patrons again for supporting us. One more time, it's patreon.com slash ITN. Huge thanks to our producers, Declan H., Cheesy Bob, Pythagos, and our newest producer, Crusader Dave. We have uh, swag available. You can get an ITN t-shirt over at shirts.amove.tv. We also have custom etched mugs and pint glasses and stuff like that over at etched.amove.tv. But before we go around the table, Jeff, where can everybody find you and all the fine entertainment that you are putting out into the world? Well, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Jeff Canada, which is spelled with two N's and one T. And I do a video game podcast called DLC. You can find that at 5x5.tv slash DLC. I also do the Slash Filmcast, talking about movies and TV shows, over at SlashFilmcast.com. Kyle, what about yourself? You can find me over at Twitch.tv slash Kyle Ferguson. If you are looking for those Diablo 1 playthroughs, they are being uploaded to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Kyle Ferguson. I'm Garrett Art on Twitter. All of the podcasts I do can be found at amove.tv. And uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, lots of Hearthstone to talk about right now on The Angry Chicken. Uh, I just did a BlizzCon wrap-up, and I'm coming out with a Diablo Immortal episode of my solo show, R2-T2. You can find that by searching for R2-T2, wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, and uh, check out newmoonart.com. That's my graphic design portfolio, and uh, since I'm not traveling for what feels like more than a month anymore, I am actually taking graphic design commissions again. So if you need some art made and you'd like me to make it, check out newmoonart.com. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Into the Nexus. We'll be back early. We don't know how early next week for episode 244 because of thanksgiving which means we need to record earlier than we usually do which means we need questions so it's mostly going to be a mailbag episode right in itncast at gmail.com if you're in that new patreon discord drop us questions in there let us know uh what you're curious about in the world of heroes of the storm uh and feel free to drop some fun ridiculous questions in there for us to close it out uh, since it'll be a holiday episode so i always look forward to those that's going to wrap it up thank you again jeff for joining us and until next time good luck and have fun. Take care. Stay positive. Don't die. If you had to do just one, would you rather they stay positive or not die? Are they on my team? <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> the truth comes out. Uh, that was rad, guys. Good show. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Real fun show. Thanks, fellas. Uh, I will talk to you all soon. Cool. See you soon. Have a good night. All right. And we will see you all soon in an hour and 20 minutes. Yep, for the patron bonanza. I may be flying in hot with food in my mouth, just FYI. Yeah, no worries. And we are uh, drop enabled here on this channel. So if you're watching tonight, you do get access to those drops and all that sorts of thing. And you can keep up with the schedule on this channel. Yep. Check it out. See you soon. Bye.